Hola amigos, I am Pedro Boy de Pedro, aka Texan Spaniard on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, Texan Spaniard Studios on Patreon and Coffee, and this is the audio version of Pedro is Marking Out, a blog of wrestling reviews that you can find on my coffee at ko-fi.com slash Texan Spaniard Studios. If you want to read the text-only versions, go there, and if you want to just hear them in audio, keep listening to this. And if you feel like donating, you can do that too at my coffee all donations are appreciated thanks and on to the blog read hola amigos i'm ready to watch some wrestling and mark out today we're looking at ring of honor wrestling episode 499 let's do this ring of honor wrestling episode 499 Quinn McKay gives us the rundown for the show, and it looks pretty darn good. Then we get promos for our first match. Delirious cuts a promo in what sounds like French, but may just be gibberish. So thankfully we get subtitles. This was pretty darn good. The story about his past rivalry versus Rocket Romero, and the scar he carries because of Romero was effective stuff. Especially with all the old clips to illustrate the story he was weaving. It is a pure rules match, but sounds like it might get heated. Rocky Romero is more laid back, but he kind of throws shade at Delirious, saying his opponent just sits in the basement while he's been growing with New Japan and New Japan Wrestling Strong. Rocky hints that he wants to win the pure title and take it to New Japan and elsewhere. Ooh, that's a good angle to go for this. Delirious is the Ring of Honor booker, if I'm not mistaken, and Rocky is a part of New Japan. Some good threads being woven here. I really love the presentation of these promos, by the way. It was like watching a special hyping up a boxing match. I'm ready for this. Delirious versus Rocky Romero. Pure rules. Amigos, this was good. Opening four minutes were technical, good technical wrestling exchanges with Romero getting the upper hand and forcing Delirious to use up one of his rope breaks. Then things picked up with strikes back and forth and both guys hitting the ropes and going for bigger moves. Delirious locked his version of the Cobra Clutch in, and while it was probably around Okada levels of not quite Cobra Clutch looking, Romero's selling got it over, and Romero has to use one of his rope breaks to escape. More back and forth, then Rocky got a Kimura on Delirious' arm, and the masked man was forced to use a second rope break. This put a target on his arm, and Romero took aim at it. Things escalated to some of that bad blood Delirious was talking about in his promo, and the masked man let loose with a closed fist punch in frustration and boiling over tension. It drew a warning from the ref, and apparently one more and he'd be disqualified. So really cool to see the pure rules in action. It is a great division, I have to say. I really love pure rules. Things escalated to back and forth flash pins, Lots of near falls and close calls until Romero got the cross on breaker on. Delirious tried to fight it off. Rocky struggled to set it in, and once it was in, Delirious tapped instantly. Big win for Romero over an old rival, and this was a hell of an entertaining match. They shook hands afterwards, and yeah, this was good stuff. Three stars from me, good match. We get a boss hype video with promos to hype up Briscoe versus Briscoe on the 500th episode. Some bad blood has been building for a while between these brothers. They lost the tag titles, were going to fight each other, then COVID changed those plans. Then they had a tag title shot, but Jay was more concerned with uh, EC3 than the tag team titles. Things haven't gone well since, and now they're going to get the issue settled so they can go back to dominating the tag scene. Good, good stuff. So ready for that match. Then Quinn McKay catches up with Bandito and Ray Horace. About the news that Horace can't team with Bandito because he's not clear due to injury. But what's this? Flamito shows up and is like, hey, we're family. Everything's cool. Let's do this. Bandito doesn't quite seem to trust Flamita, And why would he after the anniversary show? But Horace seems convinced. So that convinces Bandito. And when Horace and Bandito walk off, Flamita does an evil laugh, confusing Quinn. Then their opponents are standing by, but really only Jay Lethal talks because he's pissed. With how La Familia Ingobernables did stuff at the anniversary show. And he is just way fired up to the point Gresham is like, you need to calm down. Oh man, I'm very intrigued to see how this main event is going to go tonight. So Jay Lethal and Jonathan Gresham versus Bandito and Flamita. Very fun match. There are some good wrestling sequences in this. 
Gresham is red hot with his run of form on catch wrestling style, and the athleticism of Bandito is just otherworldly. But the real story here was the Mexa Blood Explosion storyline. There's been bad blood between Flamita and Bandito for a while. It appeared here again with some miscommunications and tempers boiling over. Late in the match, they both get tired of the mistakes and they shove each other and start fighting. The referee and their opponents are not sure what to do, but then Lethal and Gresham take advantage of the situation to set up Bandito for defeat. Lethal gets the figure four in Bandito, and Flamita makes like he will reach under the ropes and help Bandito, but then he waves it off with a laugh and leaves Bandito to his fate, who is forced to tap out. Flamita says, Mexa blood are no more as he heads to the back, and Bandito shakes his opponent's hands, but he is not happy with how things went, and definitely not with Flamita. Bandito Flamita should be some kick-ass stuff since their other matches in Mexico and elsewhere have all been fantastic spectacles. Fun match, good stuff, two and a half stars. Another good episode of Ring of Honor Television. Looking forward to episode 500. We'll definitely catch that sometime next week. Thanks for reading and catch y'all again when I catch more wrestling.